finding or findings should the nurse consider as a manifestation of potential complication in a client with polycythemia vera? Select all that apply. Okay. Don't freak out. You know the answer to this, right? So we will work it together. But let's understand the question first. Which finding or findings should the nurse consider as a manifestation of potential complication in a client with polycythemia vera? All right, it's a selector that apply question. Okay, remember, okay, what do we know or what do you remember about polycythemia vera? Anything which comes to your mind. What is something which immediately comes to your mind when we say that word? Anybody? Go ahead. Go ahead. What is something which comes? RBC, high hemoglobin. Okay, okay. Blood clots. Good job. Increase in RBC, increase in cells. Cythemia, poly, poly is a lot. Cythemia is, you know, more, more cells. So blood clot okay why blood clot right so we are going to discuss polycythemia vera first and i know you guys are thinking about what could be related to that blood clot kind of problem but increased blood okay platelet rbc wbc increase a oh, great great you guys are getting it okay let, let's discuss this because i made a very big concept map on that and I know this is really big but it's everything about polycythemia so I'm going to break it down into this part and this part and we are going to discuss that okay so first we are going to discuss this part you all know what happens with polycythemia and I think most of you are very very aware about um, the issues which is going on you know there is more cells that's the main problem the more cells but what are the more cells, right? What's going to happen? So it's not just the RBC, which is going to be probably increased. There will be RBCs, there will be WBCs, and there will be platelet. All of them might go up. So here is the deal. When RBC is enlarged, or RBCs are more, that is going to be a lot more work for taking those things out too right when there is more cells i mean they are going to die so if there's a lot of cells getting there then they all are going to probably like the the turnover is going to be high too and you know who is the one working to remove all the dead cells or, or the turnover once the cells are dying that's going to be the spleen right so the liver and the spleen is going to have extra workload because there is a lot of cells the high turnover which is going on and there is a term which we use erythromelalgia okay erythromelalgia algia you know what algia is right algia is a word we use for pain so erythromelalgia is is more like a kind of a painful situation but it's more with a burning pain of feet and hands and sometimes there may be like redness, like erythema. Sometimes there can be paleness, pallor, or sometimes there can be paresthesia, like a numbness and tingling kind of sensation. And there can be even cyanosis if there is, you know, blood circulation is getting prevented or, or something like that happens, then there can be cyanosis. So it's a variety, a spectrum of differences or problems which can happen, but it's eventually getting like a burning pain and tingling sensation and, and redness or paleness or sometimes like, you know, really bluish cyanosis. That is called erythromelalgia and that happens when there is a lot of RBCs present. A lot of anything is probably not going to be okay even if we think that RBCs are good stuff but a lot of it not good now that is also going to increase the workload of the spleen and the liver because they are the ones who have to take care of all these extra stuff and they are going to have megaly which means hepatosplenomegaly meaning enlargement the liver is overworked the spleen is overworked so it's enlargement so we will be able to palpate you know when you palpate you'll be able to feel that 
and of course when your liver which is on the right side the major organ and spleen which is on the left side which is the major organ if both of them are enlarged I, mean, I would say that you're going to have some abdominal pain and you're going to feel like fullness and, and, and you might even not feel like eating much because it's like you know nauseated and all the problems which could be there you could see it you know in this patients okay so that's the rbc part but what happens when there is leukocytosis which means the wbc is increasing too now we might think that oh lots of wbc good thing a lot of immunity no it doesn't work that way anything which is more is is going to going to actually overload the system because everything has certain kind of you know time period and now we have to take care of all this body has to get rid of all this so the body is going to get even more work because of this and and also it is going to increase the viscosity which is we are going to talk about later and the patients will feel so tired all the time and and that's sometimes something which they will complain of i feel tired i don't feel like doing anything and that could be you know not maybe they don't have an infection right now but it could be coming okay and then the next thing you said the platelet is going to be increased and we know when the platelet is increased thrombotic events blood clots are going to form so that's one thing we, we discussed in one of the webinars specifically that point about polycythemia vera we discussed about dvt prevention we discussed about elevating the legs and making sure that you are not dehydrated and making sure that you do the active passive exercise and all those things we discussed in uh, polycythemia vera because of this thrombotic event the platelets going up right but this is going to give you a big picture of what is polycythemia going to happen i mean what is going to do what is it going to how is it going to affect on that patient and the other one is viscosity there is going to be more cells so the blood blood is going to have more elements in it more stuff in it the more stuff the more viscosity um to just to kind of understand i would say more thicker i mean that's not the right way to say it but let's say it's more thicker just for the simple understanding because we are not trying to become phd academicians here we are trying to understand something and and become and like successful right so let me just put it in that very very simple way the blood is going to get more stuff in it which make it more viscosity and when the blood is viscous thicker it's easy to clot and on top of that you have more platelets so it's very easy to have that blood clot right now we know about that problem and that's why we are talking about dvt prevention and everything associated with it but there is one word or one disease condition which uh, which i want to uh, throw in there and that is called bud curie syndrome Okay, bud curie syndrome now what is bud curie syndrome this is where the liver the liver vein the hepatic vein is getting occluded so you know the liver right? we, we talked about it in gi system uh, when we talked about liver cirrhosis and, and liver problems esophageal varices and things like that we talked about um, how liver is such a a highly vascular structure we talked about how there is lots of small 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 blood vessels in the liver right i mean and liver does a major work of removing all the toxins and producing all the uh, things which are needed for coagulations and so many great functions which liver is going to do but they are going to get occluded and when they are getting occluded liver is not going to function properly and that condition is called bud curie syndrome okay that's something you will see so the hepatic vein occlusion is going to happen let me make it a little bit bigger here so you can see it uh, the hepatic vein occlusion is going to happen and uh, what the patient is going to complain if that happens is going to be right upper quadrant pain there is going to be nausea you know nausea ascites and portal hypertension and and all those things which are associated with liver problem you will see it so now do you see how that polycythemia vera is happening and the patient is complaining about right upper quadrant pain and nausea 
Now that's where the connection comes because now you know how this polycythemia vera is going to affect the liver. So one is going to what the overload the liver and hepatosplenomegaly and stuff is going to happen and then it's going to make those little clots in that vein and, and that's going to be even worse. Then the liver is going to dysfunction. So if the liver is not working, we know when the liver is not working, when the liver failure patients, cirrhosis patients, what is something we are always worried about? Bleeding because liver makes those you know and the coagulation factors which are needed so polycythemia vera patients may have blood clots but in some other way they may also have bleeding right so someone who can have blood clot issue in the same time they may also have some bleeding issue or maybe one of the patient have bleeding issue the other person have clotting issue so we have to be very careful in evaluating the clients because it's not just one thing. Polycythemia vera is not one system which is getting affected. It can be everywhere. And the signs and symptoms could be so different. But we are smart to connect them, right? Because we have this, okay. So here is another one. The other problems which is going to happen, the viscosity is, viscosity is increased, right? We said the viscosity is increased and that can cause hypertension or, or let's say hypertension kind of problem because it's more blood flow or more like, you know, things which the heart has to handle, right? Because the viscosity is increased and, and, and veins are getting occluded and, and the stress is going to be more for the heart. So what's going to happen is the hypertensive kind of response can happen. So the patients may experience headache we know hypertension and headache is related we know how visual disturbances happen when there is hypertension right because people may have uh, maybe like they will blurry vision or they may have diplopia or they may have like even the dizziness the vertigo the tinnitus lightheadedness all those things and, and seeing spots or or all those things can happen because polycythemia is also causing hypertension all right now other problem is more toxins because when the polycythemia happens and the problem which is going to happen is more toxins because I, I, like we said it's a lot of work lots of cells so all these cells has to turn over i mean they are all going to die somebody has to clean it up and so all these cells are going to get break and broken down and when they break down there is going to be the the things which are not needed like we can say toxins right they are going to be abnormal stuff which has to be cleared so who is going to clear all that i mean the kidney has to do that the liver has to do that overloading again right so the patients are going to probably have pruritis now why pruritis because bilirubin is high and where is this bilirubin is coming because there is a lot of rbc's which are getting broken down and when the rbc's break down one of the you know the product which comes by product we can say or the end product we can say is going to be bilirubin the more bilirubin and on top of that your liver is not working properly and when you combine all that it's going to be pruritis and pruritis is itching and why itching because bilirubin is coming through the skin it's creating through the skin so pruritis gout is going to be there uric acid why because all these cells which are breaking down it's going to increase the uric acid level which is again a byproduct so the uric acid level is going to go high who is supposed to remove the uric acid again supposed to be done by kidney but it may not happen because it's too much and then what happens when there is a lot of uric acid gout we know that right increase in uric acid causes gout so patients with polycythemia vera may end up having gout because of increased uric acid because of all this process which is going on. They may have bone pain. They may have insomnia and mood issues because that of the toxins which are getting continuously produced and the, all the um, you know, organs are trying hard to get rid of them but may not happen in a very good rate which is accumulating more. So sleep issue, mood issue. And they may have early satiety. Early satiety is a word we use. Um, early satiety is when people have um, 
you know they feel full the moment they they eat a little bit they they feel like their stomach is so full so that kind of problems can happen that's early satiety and it can be because of the enlarged spleen and and, and uh, the liver too peptic ulcer disease oh people with polycythemia vera may also end up having peptic ulcer disease how come due to the alteration in gastric mucosa blood flow these little little blood clots which are there is going to affect everywhere they might prevent the proper blood flow to the stomach and we know stomach need the blood flow intestine need the blood flow for proper digestion absorption and everything so the mucosa layer may get you know a little bit of ulcerations and and so gastritis peptic ulcer disease which is gastritis right the the ulcers can problem it probably happen too gastritis become ulcerations and then we will say peptic ulcer disease can be gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer marginal ulcer so there we go problems okay so polycythemia now you see how it is affecting all all kinds of all kinds of uh, systems and how they are connected so let me go to the next uh, part because so far we discussed this way we are going to discuss that part of the concept map here and here we got this uh, here we, we are actually talking about the causes and and how can we treat it and the cause is basically one of the cause we don't even know yet it's, it's more like a genetic problem so um, uh, it seems like the jews of eastern uh, european descent uh, seems to have more of that a polycythemia issue so there is a mutation in the gene which might be happening and could be causing it uh, but most of the time polycythemia is secondary which means it's because of some other disease process so somebody is having renal disease and, and we know about renal disease and kidney has a major part in asking bone marrow to make the cells we know bone marrow makes the cells right the rbc the wbc the platelets everything comes from that bone marrow production so uh, there is erythropoietin which is supposed to be made by the kidney which is having some effect on asking the bone marrow to make cells so when somebody has renal disease when that part of erythropoietin and communication between the kidney and the bone marrow is not working properly they might end up having production like that and and that could be um, a polycythemia issue so that's one way the other one is when somebody have chronic lung problem um, if you had your um, copd lesson uh, in the in the course you will remember probably our emphysema patient or you know how that pink puffer the pink color because it's chronic hypoxia and in response to the chronic hypoxia the body produces more you know rbcs trying to kind of give more oxygen uh, it's not going to work in the long long way i mean we, we know all about that but that response the compensatory response to chronic hypoxia could be uh, polycythemia and then people can get that the same for the cyanotic heart disease especially when congenital heart disease or, or kids with cyanotic heart disease they might have this polycythemia because the body is trying hard to compensate i mean you are not having enough oxygen in your body so what do i do let me make more rbc maybe i can give you more hemoglobin and they can carry more oxygen and you know that's what happens right so that's the secondary part so those are the causes of, of polycythemia now um, we are going to come to the treatment part now like what are the treatment treat the cause treat the cause because i don't think we can do much here it's a genetic mutation but these things probably we can you know do some treatment there so it's not that i am going to treat polycythemia rather than it is i am going to treat the underlying cause which is the problem so if this is happening because of renal disease treat the renal problem if this is happening because of lung problem treat that if this is happening because of a heart problem treat that okay so it's going to be treat the cause now a uh, couple of things i want to mention here most patients may get low dose aspirin be very careful when we say that 
because we are giving low dose aspirin low dose meaning like 81 milligrams of aspirin most probably so we are giving low dose aspirin as a prevention for blood clot but you also know that if the liver or the butt curry syndrome or the liver dysfunction already really bad then this may not be a good idea because we might add on to the bleeding problem so it depends on each client and each context right so generally we can say load of aspirin is a good preventive strategy for blood clot because we expect the viscosity the platelets and the blood clots so we might use it but we have to continuously monitor for any bleeding if there is any bleeding we stop the aspirin right because we don't want to go to the extreme end either the other medicine is hydroxyurea now hydroxyurea is something which reduces the growth of new cells i mean sometimes it's used as um, um cancer kind of medications i mean sometimes it's it's like you know new cells will be like they will they will stop it they will reduce it so that's a that's a good medicine yes there are side effects but if it comes to a point that we have to use something to reduce this protection of cells because it's too much and it's creating so much problem then we may have to reduce the growth of new cells and, and that's done by or with the use of hydroxyurea all right okay pruritis pruritis management i mean it's going to be very itchy for the patient because of all the toxins the bilirubin the urea and all those things coming out from the body it's going to be itchy so what do we do we can do all the pruritic management uh, we discussed that um, in in our lessons um, but one of the things medicine wise what we can use is antihistamines right so it reduces the itching but um, i also wanted to say here um, clean um, you know keeping the skin clean and, and moisturized as needed and uh, making sure that if it is kids and maybe they have to wear some mitten or something so they don't scratch and also making sure they use like long sleeve shirt or something so you don't scratch directly on the on the skin um, and also the nails you know cutting them in a very you know straight and, and short and so it won't you know people may not get any kind of skin lacerations so all those kind of things will be included in the pruritus management um, but we already discussed that many times in our lesson ssri another um, treatment option uh, medication we know what ssri is right everybody know what ssri is all right can somebody tell me what ssri is i bet you know that okay very good selective so serotonin reuptake inhibitor we use it as a mood disorder or, or psychiatric or mental illness kind of a medication right but sometimes they are needed i mean especially when somebody is having a uh, pain all over and their depression mood and and all those things which is going on ssris are helpful it's not that they are having a um, you know psychiatric problem no this is used as to help the patient overall okay and the other uh, thing which we can use or, or we do is a uh, phlebotomy right phlebotomy is another treatment option and um, yeah in phlebotomy what we do is we just take out the blood right i mean the patient is having a lot of viscous blood there is a lot of cells so what do we do we take some out and um, it depends on how much okay i mean it depends on each patient but maybe like 250 300 500 up to 500 ml per session so it's a range so it depends on each patient though they, they just take it yeah therapeutic phlebotomy and um, how many times they have to do it it depends on the hemoglobin level and what is going on with the patient so some patients may have to do it repeatedly until they reach that goal level um, and then we have to watch okay there are some things i wanted to mention here the complications of phlebotomy um, and one of them is chronic iron deficiency um, because the patients are losing you know we are taking it out so patients may have chronic iron deficiency they might get anemic i mean that kind of like what are you talking about right i mean this patient is having so much hemoglobin and we are trying to get rid of all the cells and now you are saying that they are having iron deficiency uh, that's because you are taking out all the all the you know new cells which are there so it could happen we have to monitor as we are not saying that everybody are going to have that we need to monitor so that we are not taking too much 
and sending them into a chronic iron deficiency state. So we may have to um, supplement uh, for that, but it depends. Usually when patients are already having a lot of cells, and a lot of hemoglobin, you will not give iron. But if anybody is suffering from iron deficiency and it's chronic iron deficiency, and it is a complication of phlebotomy, then maybe we will stop phlebotomy or you know, slow down on that and we'll treat the iron problem and then start back again. So it depends on what is going on. Um, and if somebody is having iron deficiency, uh, we will say they may have um, stomatitis, oops, so let me get that back here. So they may have stomatitis, glossitis. Uh, we know what glossitis is. We know what stomatitis is, right? Stomatitis, what happens in stomatitis? Where is that itis coming, the inflammation? Or we learned about it in um, chemotherapy medications and in, yeah, in the mouth, very good. The ulcers, the mucosa inside the mouth might get inflamed. I mean, it may also kind of go down and get gastritis and problems too, but that's, that's very painful, right? And glossitis is the, the tongue, yeah, the tongue. So that could get inflamed and you know, it could be like reddish and, and the problems would be there. Uh, pica. Pica is when uh, we learn that in maternity, uh, you know, when people kind of eat things which are not, not only dirt, but things which are not really nutritional value, right? And, and they just, yeah, not, not something which we usually eat, but people are eating it. And we learn that whenever somebody is having pica, we want to look for the hemoglobin level and iron deficiency and stuff like that, right? We, we, yeah, it could be an anemic sign. So now we are connecting all that. So think about that, okay? So if somebody is having phlebotomy a lot of times and, and consistently they are having it, they might go into the other extreme where they may have deficiency. Yeah, true eating soil. Uh, muscle weakness, again, uh, that's another uh, problem with chronic complications which could happen with phlebotomy. And, and those kind of issues we may have to monitor. All right, so now a little bit more um, notes on that, um, you know, what we are going to tell the patients. Um, a little bit extra notes on uh, when it comes to the you know, teaching part of it. Uh, avoid high sodium diet because high sodium is going to you know, usually we say wherever the sodium is, that's where the water is, right? So when there is high sodium diet, there's a high chance that the patient is going to hold on to the fluid. And the more fluid, more workload. More workload, you know, more blood volume, that's not going to be okay for the heart. Hypertension is already there. So avoid high sodium diet, but you can drink water, I mean, Keep yourself hydrated, adequately hydrated, but don't go into fluid retention. That's what we are trying to do. And remember the DVT prevention, which we discussed, like avoid dehydration, exercise, putting on that stockings and, and elevating the legs and, and making sure that you move and all those stuff. Okay, so, <laughs> so that was a lot uh, about polycythemia vera, but, um, you know, I mean, I just wanted to make sure that you get all of that um, in, our, in, the, in the system. Now, the, the thing is, um, you know, somebody uh, might be thinking that, oh, we just discussed one question, but this is what I want to tell you. This is not just one question. Each of this component is another question. So you might get questions on, you know, what is the causes or which are the patients who might be, you should be careful about who might get polycythemia. There may be questions about, you know, what are the, what are the causes or, or how can we treat it? Or there may be questions about uh, phlebotomy or there may be questions about uh, sodium diet or there may be questions about viscosity or, or, or questions about, um, you know, the gout, the toxins, the GI. So it's, it's everything together. But when you, when you have this, you just look at it and you're like, oh, everything is here. And it's so easy to review. So this is what I'm working on. Um, this comes in here. Thank you, thank you, JC, so much. It took me a long time to make this because I had to read um, a lot of resources, do a lot of questions and a lot of reading um, to make this. And um, 
it, it but it's very worth it right so this is what we are going to use um, in our rapid review session which uh, which is coming in october so my my that's what i'm hoping to get it to you we will be discussing as i progress i will be discussing it in uh, in our um, online class too but rapid review people will be like mostly I'll, i'm just going to put them onto that <laughs> not the big big things but you have to have everything ready in in one set okay ready rapid review right it's called rapid review you should be ready for your exam okay so here we go we have to still do the question remember we just talked about it but our question and answer is still here so what do you think what do you think is the answer now which finding or findings should the nurse consider as a manifestation of potential complication in a client with polycythemia vera right very good marin very good suja i am proud of you guys sunita very good very good subhi sarada very good harpreet okay all of the above because good job guys visual disturbances remember the hypertension and the part lightheadedness remember the dizziness and the issues gout yes extra toxins gastritis yes gi system is going to be affected tinnitus yes we discussed that too the you know the system can be hypertensive kind of problems and so all the above i am so proud of you and i'm so glad that this is <laughs> this is our yes we know with one answer we discuss 100 questions right so but just make sure that you know how to connect right don't stick yourself with um what do you say in in nclex you know it's always going to be a gray area right it's not going to be just one question and one answer always right the same answer could be wrong in the next question because the context change so always be on the lookout for that right be careful with that okay 